What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing good. Today is a beautiful day. <laughs> Hope it's a beautiful day by you too. So, Zimbabwe is asking for reparation for the loss and economically associated the destruction of the country due to imposed sanction by the United States of America. For those of you who know, um, the U.S. has imposed sanction, drastic sanction over Zimbabwe for two decades now, and this is playing a big, big role, big negative role on the economy of the people of Zimbabwe. Many Zimbabwe flee the country. I mean, you cannot export, you cannot import, you cannot commerce, you cannot exchange, you cannot cut deals with other companies and other countries because of the sanctions. And uh, some Zimbabwe has, have woken up to go to the U.S. US Embassy in March and demand reparation for the destruction of the economy. Uh, we are also filing for reparations for the losses that the country has um, experienced for the past 23 years that we have been uh, under these illegal sanctions. The bus, which has been kept at the main entrance of the U.S. Embassy compound in Harare since March 2019 in protest of the sanctions, is also seeking a response from the embassy on why the sanctions are still maintained. So they say the lobby is demanding a compensation for the sanction imposed two decades ago. Members of the Board of Alliance Against Sanction and their legal team arrived at the High Court to file a court application seeking reparation from the United States for imposing sanctions on Zimbabwe. So these sanctions were imposed in Zimbabwe due to what? Okay, why is there sanction on Zimbabwe? Uh, many, many years ago, uh, people from Europe came to Africa. They conquered Africa. Okay, by finishing people, destroying land, destroying the people, by taking by force. I'm not going to use those terms because you're going to be sanctioned. Everything is sanctioned. When you tell the truth, you're sanctioned. When you think differently, you sanction. When you want to do your own things, you sanction. And when you want to narrate the story the way it really works, you get sanctioned. So I trust your intelligence. You're going, to, you're going to understand what I'm trying to say. They came to the land. They took over the land. They mistreated the people. They abused the, our mothers, our grandmothers, so many things drastic. I don't even know how to explain this. So Zimbabwe was run by many descendants of Europeans. They had the land, okay? They were farmers, they produced goods, they made money out of it. Unfortunately, all the money they make, great majority of the money they make was sent back to England and other countries. Instead of infusing or injecting the money into the economy of Zimbabwe, the money was sent to Europe. And then came Robert Mugabe, the president, and he was not happy about that. He said, if you truly are Zimbabweans, like you said, you say you were born here, only your great, great, great ancestors came here. You were born here, therefore, making you a true Zimbabwean. Why are you sending the money out of Zimbabwe to a different country? If you truly are Zimbabwean, like you say, why is your money going to England? Please explain that to us. If you really are Zimbabwean, then you should be injecting your money to the Zimbabwean economy in order to create jobs, in order to finance taxes and, you know, and infrastructures of this country. So many of these people didn't like that. And because they didn't like that, President Robert Mugabe decided to take the land by force from these descendants of Europeans who came to Africa by force and acquired things by force. Was he wrong to do it? Was he wrong to take the land back by force without compensation? Because some of them obviously wanted to be paid for the land. They say, we want to be paid for the land. The land that was abducted or taken by force by our ancestors and doing damage to the local people by the same token. But we want to be paid because we, that's none of our business. We did not do any damage to nobody. We were born in families that already had land. Therefore, this land belongs to us and nobody will take it by force. We have to be compensated. Now, the question arises here. Did their ancestors pay for the land or did they not care? Now, why should the people of today really care if your ancestors did not care? That's a big question to answer. Now, the US came uh, as long as it was accompanied with uh, England. They decided with Tony Blair and the other guy, whatever his name was, to sanction Zimbabwe. So Zimbabwe could not trade anymore. They could not get money like they used to anymore. And the economy was shattered. Therefore, getting the Zimbabweans fleeing the country, going to different countries, trying to get visas to England and South Africa and many other places. Today, as per 2016, by some report, they say there's about 1.5 million Zimbabweans living in South Africa, neighboring country. Yes. And these guys are not stupid. Most of them are very well educated because it is reported that Zimbabwe 
Zimbabwe is, is one of the most educated countries in Africa. People have the most uh, degrees and qualifications from university, but they cannot make a life in their own country because of the sanction. Now, America and England say the sanction was against a couple of people, a few people in government because they were corrupt, because they were dictators, because they were doing the wrong things. So sanction was directed to Robert Mugabe and his group. Now, Robert Mugabe has been gone for a long time. Yeah, he's departed a long time ago, but the sanction is still on. That's a big question. Why are the sanctions still imposed on Zimbabwe if the person or the target's people are not there anymore? And by the way, even if the sanctions were targeting Robert Mugabe, a president of the Republic in Africa who makes a lot of money every single second, how do you think you're going to sanction him by sanctioning everybody? Who are you truly sanctioning? Are you sanctioning the president or are you sanctioning the people who cannot get rice, cannot get bread, cannot get sugar? Do you truly think that by sanctioning the people, the president of a republic will not have like, rice, bread or potatoes? Absolutely not. So you are literally sanctioning the people. You're not sanctioning the president. Now, the president is not anymore. Why is Zimbabwe still sanctioned? That's a big question. Now, these people have come in the street and saying, we want reparation from the United States for destroying our economy, for destroying the livelihoods of normal Zimbabweans. Are they going to get compensated? What do you think? That's a big question. I don't even think we need to think about that. But yeah, we live in a world that's very unfair. I'm sure you know that by now. Uh, the Jewish went through a very difficult time. Uh, they were compensated by Germany. They paid over $86 billion for, I know it's not worth the life of people, but they did something. They showed some, you know, that's action. That just the, it shows that we're willing to accept that we've done you wrong, even though this does not equate the life of the people that have, but this shows that we're trying to do something. Okay. At the end of slavery, the slave owners were compensated. Yes. So for freeing your slave, you're getting money from government. A government borrowing 20 billion pounds to pay slave owners for losing property and their properties who? That's the world we're living in. But when it comes to Africa, they tell you what? Uh, forget about it. You know, you need to move on. These things are gone. Long time ago, you didn't live within that period of time. But, you know, forget. You need to forget and move on. When it's Africans, you forget and move on. When it's other people, it's okay. A country like Zimbabwe, will you blame them when they join BRICS? Can you blame Zimbabweans when they look for alternative ways of survival? Dealing with China, dealing with Russia, and all these countries that are not pro-America and pro-West. Will you be angry if they choose to do that? When they are truly and clearly being unfairly sanctioned. If you truly sanctioned the president because you thought he was the wrong guy, why are Zimbabweans still sanctioned today? We know that the president Monangagwa, who is the new president of Zimbabwe, was pressured um, a few months back. They came to him because they realized that Zimbabwe has got lithium, which is a mineral very necessary for the creation of batteries for electrical cars. We know the technology is really moving towards electrical cars and stuff like that. So there's going to be a great uh, demand for lithium in the world for big enterprises. They came to him, yeah, in a very dodgy way, in a very sneaky way, said, don't we need some of your lithium? Can we deal with this? He said to them, no. If you want the lithium in my country, then you need to lift the sanction. Stop coming in a sneaky, dodgy, funny, candly kind of way. Well, they expected Monagagua to be easier than Robert Mugabe that was hated by the West because it was straight. He said the United Nation is not fair. It's not clear. There's no need to be part of the United Nation if most powerful countries uh, the Security Council can only be composed by the West. There's no single African country on the Security Council. And the Security Council is where the people can make big decisions about the world. If 20 people say we're going to do A and one person in the Security Council say no, we're going to do B. Then everybody has to go toward B and not toward A. Even though 20 people said we want to do A. That's the power of the Security Council. And Robert Mugabe said, what's the need of being part of this if we're not in the Security Council? It means we're not treated equally. And he refused to be part of the ICC, which is the International Criminal Court. He said this is absolute rubbish. The ICC is only there to condemn African president and people that are, name one Western president that been called to the ICC. One president from the West who has been called to the ICC. Are you telling me they never do anything wrong? What happened in Iraq? What happened in Syria? What happened in Libya? Who paid for that? Nobody. Now Zimbabweans have marched to the US embassy in Zimbabwe asking for reparation. Obviously they have not responded and you know it's like a big guy. I mean what are you truly going to go? What are you truly going to do against the United States? 
existed. Now, the big question is this. If Zimbabwe is such a bad country that need to be sanctioned, why is there an embassy of the United States in Zimbabwe still? It's a big question. So the bottom line is they wanted Zimbabwe to say, okay, you took our land, but we're sorry, we're going to give you the land back. Guess what? Zimbabwe did so. In 2020, they made a promise, we're going to give you the land back. Yes, they still are under sanctions. How do you explain that? Let me know how you think about this. This is very sad for our brothers from Zimbabwe who are, yeah, they are trying very hard. It's very difficult. I mean, it came to a moment where people of Zimbabwe living in different countries, including South Africa, every time they needed to go back to Zimbabwe to visit the families, they will take bread, they'll take sugar, they'll take milk, they'll take blankets, which is absolutely humiliating for a country that is supposed to be free. Unbelievable.